Hello and welcome to this second video in our 3D WebGL tutorial where I'm using JavaScript and the P5 library made by Processing.org to get some 3D animations working in whatever kind of like web page or game or simulation that you're working on. So in this tutorial we're going to get some lighting in our scene um, and we use some different materials and we need to get one object rotating or orbiting around another so that you could go and build like a, a solar system or something like that. So welcome to tutorial two. Right, this is going to be really, really quick. It's exactly four o'clock and my battery's running out and other things. So 10 minutes or something like that. Or 12. Give me 12 minutes. <laughs> let's see what we can do. So first thing, let's change the material. So at the moment in setup, we're loading our red hen um, PNG into this variable RH text, which stands for something like red hen texture. Okay, that we just made up. We don't have to call it red hen texture. And then when we draw our egg planet, we're calling the texture function and using that variable where we stored the texture. So instead of doing that, what we can do is you call a let's start with ambient ambient texture sorry ambient material there we go and the arguments you want to pass in is the color of the material that you want so it's very very familiar to us um red green and blue so let's go for let's go for green since we've got a back uh, a red background there we go and let's run and see if we've got any results at the moment. See what's going on. Okay, so that's a thumbnail shot. That is a thumbnail shot. That looks pretty good. But it's not a, a particularly realistic looking um, material and we've lost our kind of 3D definition. And that's because we haven't really set up the lighting. So whatever default lights are going on, um, we haven't really got a positionality for our, sorry, a position <laughs> for our light. Okay. So let's go and make a light and let's see what happens. Also, you might have noticed that we didn't get like a texture that was shaded like an ambient material. So P5 doesn't combine a texture and a material. You either have one or the other. And the last one that you call will overwrite the previous one. So in fact, we could just comment out our texture there and we'll get a very similar result. There might be a slight change. We might get some wireframe going on. Okay, this is also cool. We've got the uh, wireframe now displayed and you can see that our models are made up of triangle strips. So like 2D, <laughs> 2D triangles in 3D space. 3D triangles, they're not 2D at all. Um, and these are called like segments. One thing we that we can do actually, which I mentioned in the first tutorial, is when we make our sphere, I want to make this slightly bigger, when we make our sphere, we can put in two more arguments for how many segments we want in the x direction and the y direction. So the default is 24 by 16 segments. So let's increase that by, can we go just by a factor of 10? There we go. No, we won't, we won't. Now, we haven't got lots of tiny triangles that we can't see. I've just remembered P5 can't render more triangles than the default setting. <laughs> Damn it. So that's annoying. So we can go the other way. We can say 12 by, I don't know, 8. And now we'll, we should have kind of a, a very ro uh, low resolution um, sphere, which looks kind of cool. There we go. That's nice. Kind of like a, a low poly uh, aesthetic if you are after that. Right. So let's just figure out what's going on. When we apply the texture, those stroke lines disappear. And the reason is when you apply a texture, um, P5 turns off the stroke, although we're not actually applying a texture. So it's like a little hidden thing that might cause you a very annoying bug for a few hours. So what you want to do, if you want to turn off the stroke, I'll just 
just run it one more time just to prove that we have got stroke on. So we have got stroke. And we should be able to do things like this. We should be able to go stroke. Let's have uh, white lines this time. So 255. So we should get some white lines this time. Like construction lines. There we go. That looks really cool. I remember that. Red background, green with white stroke lines looks good. Um, we could just say no stroke. And now we won't be able to see those construction lines. There we go. And that will avoid the bug of the only way you can find to not have wireframe is if you apply texture that doesn't get used. So that will overcome that. So we've got control over kind of how things look using a material now. Okay, so um, let's take that away. Keep no stroke on. Um, so we're gonna put a light in our scene so we can actually see an ambient material. Right, so you can use an ambient light, you could use a directional light, but I'm just going to have a look at the point light. Ambient light is just um, kind of like the, the atmospheric light in an area. Um, a directional light is a light that has a particular direction, so you can have like shadow areas, but again, it's a kind of direction that pervades the entire scene. Um, so it kind of mimics sunlight. If you just wanted a static sun, um, maybe directional lights for you and point light is like a, a light that's actually a physical has a physical position in the the scene and I think it's the most intuitive one so it's a light you can move around and it will change the lighting so we might have a go mapping it to our mouth position so it's like you've got a little torch how am I get, doing for time terribly it's already been six minutes right so four minutes to do this so let's let's do this straight away so we want to say point light and first you set its color. My advice is to set it white. 255, 255, 255. Um, because like in the real world, if you have a light of a certain color and then a, an object of a certain color, you don't get the, the resultant color won't be the color of the object. It'll be a combination of what lighting you've got. So when you're first experimenting with lights, just make sure it's a white light and then objects will be the color that you expect them. So then you put in its position in 3D space. Let's just go for zero, 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 and see what happens. Can you predict what will happen? This is kind of like a game. Did you predict that? Did you predict it will go black? Well done if you're, if that's what you guessed. So the background is unaffected by the point light. It's only going to shed light on um, objects that you've got in your scene, and we're getting no light. But we have changed the color. So we haven't changed the color. We've changed the resultant appearance. And what's happening is um, our light is in the very center of our scene, which means it's inside <laughs> our object. So all we've got to do is position it outside the object. So if we positioned it into the scene, we'd still get a black shape silhouetted because the light would be behind the object. So we want the object to be basically in the same position where our pretend eyes are looking into the scene. So that's positive on the Z axis. And maybe if we go about 400 this way, because our, our sphere is 200 in terms of its radius. I think it's its radius, not its diameter. Then we should get a light shining directly, yes, at our object. And now we can see it's three, three uh, dimensionality. Right, that's looking pretty good, looking pretty good. Let's um, now, what can we do? Let's have a look at a different material. So I can just change, in fact, Let's copy that so I can just comment out the one that I want to use, or indeed, the one that you're going to use will be the last one that you've called. So just like when we call the ambient material, that overrode the texture call, um, now specular will override ambient call. Of course, it'd be more, more efficient on the computer to do this, so it's not applying two materials. But just to prove that effect, I'll leave that there. So it should be the same color. But now the way the light will interact with the, um, with the object will be different. So we've got some specularity going on. Lovely. So the, now that we've got a specular material working, I'll comment that out now that I've proved it, um, we can up, let's up the resolution of our, um, of our sphere. 
so we'll get a more realistic looking um, egg planet. There we go, it looks more like a billiard ball. So um, we've got lots and lots of segments, so the resolution of, uh, uh, of the light and the, the shadow is going to be um, improved. Right, it's 10 minutes, let's, two more minutes, let's see if I can at least map the mouse, sorry, the point light onto the mouse position. So we've we're making the point light in every draw um, call, in every draw loop, in every frame. We could have just put that in setup if we just wanted a static point light, but this time we want to move it according to the mouse. So we could put mouse X, mouse Y in the X and the Y position. The mouse obviously doesn't have, well I almost tried just then, doesn't have a Z position. So we're gonna leave the light about here in terms of its relation to the scene. Right, let's just see what happens there. So this would look good with a, this should look good with a specular material. So we're now moving our mouse around, and it's actually moving where the light is. But notice that it's not quite orientated right. So that's because we've got a three-dimensional coordinate system, an object, and, and light, and our mouse positions are two-dimensional, so it's not quite ma matching up. You can basically see when we put a mouse at zero zero, then the light is at zero zero, so it's offset. Two D graphics has zero zero up here. Three D graphics has zero 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 in the center. So all we have to do, let's put these on separate lines. Oh, that's really annoying. We need we need the commas in the right place. We need to go at the end of the line, obviously, else everything will break. Um, so we just have to offset that by minus width divided by two. I'm saying this very confidently. <laughs> Height divided by two, and it's 12 minutes. Let's let's just see if we've mapped that. Okay, yes, we've got a mouse in the center of the screen, and it maps up really nicely. And the illusion is a lot better. That's really good. Okay, so. Thank you very much for watching. I think I'll just give you a preview of something I've prepared for next time. Is it about here? Let's have a look. Um, so let me just switch to different script I've been playing around with. I think it's this one. Well, we've got some orbiting going on. So yes, um, next time we could get a, an object moving around another object and you can kind of set the tilt of its orbit and things like that. And and yes, um, do let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do anything particular in 3D using WebGL and P5. Thanks very much for watching. Oh, as <laughs> at the time of filming, I've got 99 subscribers, which is really nice in this little channel. So hello everyone, <laughs> 99. <laughs> That's really cute. Okay, goodbye. Thank you.